Greetings to all and welcome to the next video tutorial of the playlist Abacus. This is the fourth video tutorial in the sequence of linear and nonlinear analysis. In previous analysis, we seen if we are using geometric and material nonlinearity. So what problem we are facing? So generally the solution is not get converged. Even we are going to increase number of increment, maximum number of allow increments in the previous simulation, but still the solution is failed. Why? Because uh, software reaches to its minimum limit uh, that we define as uh, minimum limit for the time increment that we define as 1 e raised to the power minus 5. So in this video tutorial, we will see why this problem is occurs and uh, what is the solution for such case. Of course, we can perform this type of analysis by using dynamic simulations. In other words, we can say by explicit, implicit or even by quasi-static analysis, we can perform such large deformation problem. But here intention is not to solve the problem. Here intention is to solve problem by static analysis itself. Why we are getting such convergence issue and how to solve that convergence issue in Abacus standard. Okay. So before understanding the convergence in Abacus, let me talk on some important terms. Those are iteration and increment. And for that, I need to open the PowerPoint presentation. So just go for here and okay. In previous video PPT, we finish here by nonlinear contact analysis or we can say the contact nonlinearity. So we will continue the topic. And so first let me explain what happened during analysis in abacus standard so basically if you are going to choose any nonlinear or linear analysis in abacus standard it uh, divide the problem into increments and solve the each increment iteratively we will talk on those and uh, the load is defined as a function of time that is very important point we will talk on this point also okay so once load is defined as a function of time, we need to choose the method. Either we can use Newton method or quasi-Newton method uh, to solve the problem. And when we submit the job, Abacus standard automatically choose a appropriate increment for the problem and uh, find the convergence for the each increment and solve the problem. And finally, we and finally results are interpolated between the nodes and elements. The first point I also mentioned in the previous video, uh, nonlinear analysis are not straightforward. We can say here the static, general static analysis not straightforward as like linear perturbation analysis. So here we have increment and iteration and we have to learn those things first. So basically increments mean abacus standard breakdown steps whatever the simulation step you define break down that steps into number of increments or we can say number of pieces here here you can see uh, those are the increments made by the abacus standard and the each increment having step size is 0 0.1 0 0.1 uh, if solution is converged it will not going to reduce the step size and here we can see the total time so assuming that simulation is 4.5 second and the simulation is completed within the five increments there is no further increments needed because simulation get converged in each increment with only one iteration those are things are nothing but your iterations okay those things are more clear in graphical view so let me continue so here is the graphical view of the beam uh, problem here we have the constraint and one load is applied and uh, these are the increments and each increments the process is iterate to converge the solution so first talk me about the linear perturbation scheme in linear perturbation scheme there is no increment no iteration whatever load we are going to apply software assume that load is applied instantaneously it's mean there is no difference of time when load is applied and when you are getting the result but the general static step not work like that it divide the analysis step into pieces like first piece second piece and those pieces are nothing but your increment and software need to solve the problem or we can say software need to converse the solution so for that it going to iterate so whatever load we have this not applied instantaneously it will apply gradually the ram type of load is assumed by the abacus standard 
so if we have applied the 100 newton load it will divide that load into pieces with respect to time or we can say the force is function of the time at the point one second this is this is the general idea uh, but it is not necessary that abacus will piece the load in similar manner okay yeah, if you have constant load uh, then may be possible uh, but if you have variable load that load will be the function of the time in different manners so in the first increment of 0.1 second the 25 newton load only applied okay and as uh, this is the first increment and for the first increment solver get convergence if there is small deformation problem no geometric nonlinearity no material nonlinearity and there is no contact nonlinearity so so, so it uh, very easily get converged uh, with one iteration only at the end of increment 1 whatever results are we have according to those results it will prepare the second increment and again solve the problem by assuming load as a function of time similarly for the third increment and similarly for the fourth increment and at the final that must the solution of all increments so this is the concept of increment in abacus standard not only in the abacus standard all type of analysis which using the increment the concept remains same okay now it's fine you you understand the increment and little bit uh, about the iteration also but here the question if it is static analysis why the time is needed this time is used as a reference in the simulation to define the boundary conditions boundary conditions like uh, in this case you have the constant load but you may not have constant load all time you want to define a variable load this type of load variable load in the abacus standard itself so if you don't have any reference like assume that we don't have the time as a reference so with respect to what you are able to define such load you unable to define such load so that's why abacus need some reference and that reference is here time okay so if you define time as a reference now your solver easily able to understand up to what time up to what reference time that force is applied and up to what reference time another variable force is applied so that's why in abacus static step time is required okay to define nonlinear boundary conditions okay let me continue again once you are aware the increment and uh, why time is needed in static general static step so let me talk on the iteration so basically to solve any problem uh, at each node equilibrium should be there equilibrium means the internal forces should be equal to the external forces okay and that uh, p is external forces i is the internal forces and r is the residue if that residue did not zero for the initial assumptions uh, we can say here here the initial assumptions is x naught and uh, we can see for that x node my solution point is that and this is my initial assumptions so of course the residue is not zero to make the residue zero residual force or you can say residue zero uh, software iterate the process uh, so it going to iterate by using newton method or quasi newton method you are very well aware to such methods and uh, here you can see a tangent will be created and at the tangent normal line will be created on the f of x and again the tangent will be created normal line will be created and it converts toward the solution okay this r value not exactly zero uh, in the iterative process actually it having certain limited value if r reaches to 10 to the power minus 5 or 10 to the power minus 7 uh, our solution uh, assumed to be converse so see for this increment some initial assumption we have and for that initial assumption software is going to iterate to get equilibrium for the internal forces and external forces on the each node so for that it going to be iterate the process and uh, once we get the solution for first increment solver move to the next increment and uh, again for the next increment the process will be repeat means iteration process will be repeat and this repeat till we did not get the complete solution but sometime we may have problem what type of problem we may face 
uh, if the equilibrium is not found up to 16 iteration the increment reduced by the 75 percent here you can see n 123rd increment after the 16 iteration software unable to attempt the convergence you can see here the u is uh, nothing but your unattempted so after 16 iterations software unable to get converse the solution so what it do it going to reduce the increment size from 0.005074 to 0.001265 it is exactly 75 percent reduction and now software try to reattempt the equilibrium okay so this is only for the reference purpose uh, i want to show one example and this is the snapshot of .htf file solution did not reduce always uh, sometime it going to increase the increment value if we have subsequent increments and those uh, two subsequent increment converse within the five iteration software increase the increment by 50 percent so for that you can see here uh, those things are get converse within third iteration and here the solution get converged in the fourth iteration so software going to increase the increment time by 50 percent similarly those two increment also converge within five iterations so again the software get increased increment size here i am saying increment and iterations and increase so make sure the words okay but Sometimes we have problem. What type of problem we have? If you have the buckling load, if you have the local collapse in the geometry, and if you have excessive large deformation, okay? Large deformation is different thing. And here we have some excessive deformation. Like, uh, let me clear. See, this is the initial beam condition. Uh, this is the large deformation problem. And if you have this type of problem, okay? So this is constraint from here and one load is applied here and this is the small deformation uh, problem you can solve it by the linear analysis this is the large deformation problem and this is the extreme deformation problem so for such extreme deformation also or extreme rotation also we are getting convergence so another thing the if we have strain softening in the material then also we are getting the convergence so so what problem we are facing in our simulation this we have excessive large deformation that's why the solution is not get converged okay now what is the solution if you are getting the excessive deformation problem so basically uh, let me show you first convergence plot and here you can see uh, sometime what happened this is very straightforward uh, graph and by uh, defining tangent and normal we are easily getting the convergence but it is not like uh, that sometimes we have very uh, critical cases and solution not convert our iterations are float around the solution uh, like here and again if the graph is some like that and here it will be and again uh, it will be create some normal and again it will be reaches here no, but not uh, uh, reaches to the solution point within the time limit okay so that's why what will happen the solution not get converged so to do so or we can say to converge the solution for such unstable conditions a artificial damping factor is introduced and due to that damping for <coughs> and due to that damping factor viscous force is introduced in the system so let me clear this okay so previously we have equation p minus i equal to r okay external force minus internal force should be equal to some limited residue okay but if that residue is not up to the certain value we are getting the large residue so that residue should be zero in our governing equation so to do so we are introducing the viscous force by mean of damping and that viscous force given by this formula okay make sure this viscous force does not have any physical significance with respect to our original problem this is only for converse the problem so if i am talking here about the viscous force so don't assume the viscosity and fluid dynamics it is only for converging the solution so right now my governing equation will be p minus i minus f that is the viscous force and that viscous force is variable 
according to the damping factor and the maximum ratio that we are allowing in the step so if we did not get convergence uh, so software will able to change this force value the viscous force value and it get converge the solution within the defined parameter okay so we have to decide like uh, up to 5% or up to 10% we are allowing the viscous force with respect to the internal strain energy or something so hope it is clear to you uh, why we are getting problem and how we are going to stabilize stabilize the problem so the finally uh, this is the conclusion uh, if we have linear analysis don't need to define any external parameters even for any type of large deformation uh, even your uh, beam component having length of 100 mm and your deformation is 1000 mm still software able to solve this problem but if you are going to define the same loads uh, for the geometric nonlinear condition it not going to solve the problem it will so if you're going to do practice make sure your force should not be too much high that for the 100 mm beam you are getting 1000 mm deformation okay what i want to say if you have small deformation you can model your system for the linear analysis no need to define geometric and material nonlinearity but if you are working for the large deformation but below the yield point you can model that behavior as a geometric nonlinearity but we are not going to but we did not need to define the material nonlinearity because we are working below the yield point but if you are working the above the yield point make sure you define the geometric nonlinearity as well as the material nonlinearity otherwise your result will mislead you okay this is the quite correct result and those are very false result because we are working for such condition or you can say for large deformation beyond the yield point okay so these things let me explain in the software uh, that will take very less time Okay, this is our previous problem uh, where we have material as well as geometric nonlinearity. So let me save your file in different folder. 03.1 with damping factor. So save your file here. Make sure the working directory somewhere else we have nonlinear analysis this one okay first thing what I need to change in the step make sure the automatic stabilization uh, here we have number of sub options for defining the damping factor so let me use the third option it is quite easy as compared to these two options so here we are allowing maximum ratio for stabilization compared to the strain energy if that ratio is 0 0.05 that's mean we are allowing 5% uh, energy allowance to get convergence okay and another most important thing such simulations are quite difficult to converse so uh, make sure the large number of increment either 2000 or 5000 increment and initial increment I am keeping as it is 0 0.01 if we need lesser increment software automatically go for that okay so just hit on ok button dismiss and go for the job uh, one more thing in previous simulation i did one mistake uh, that mistake is nothing in material i defined the density value wrongly okay uh, because our unit that we are assuming is in mm ton and second so the density will be 7800 e raised to the power minus 12 and here we define something else so let me define 7800 e raised to the power minus 12 and other thing that I told you that density value does not affect our static analysis even if you go for delete this density just go for delete it so right now you have only the non-linear material you did not have any density here okay let's go for okay and again go for the job 
make sure you save your file go for job yeah if you want to create new job you can go for create or you can go for rename the existing one the material non linearity and uh, 0.05 damping ratio let's hit on okay button and go for submit let me monitor the process and you can see here uh, without any error message due to density because i told you for the structural static analysis we did not need a density value so it is start the solution and uh, it will take some time to converge the solution so let finish it and after that we will go discuss on results okay once solution has done uh, let me open the results uh, because i close the window i cannot open the results from here i have to open it manually uh, just go for here in result and right click and open sorry here and right click and open so this is my odb file go for here deform and undeform shape likewise okay and you can see here go for some standard view let me compare those result with respect to linear analysis and geometric non linear analysis so to do so i have to open two more viewports or window and tile those here i am going to open the geometric linear analysis just go for open odb file deform and undeform mode standard view make sure the scale factor is 1 apply and okay this is the geometric linear analysis let me open here geometric non linear but material is linear and here also go for some standard view and this is the material as well as geometric nonlinear analysis so here you can see a clear difference between results and let me plot the results also i just opt the results view and go for viewport annotation options check those all on apply and okay and similarly for this and this also view viewport annotation options sorry viewport viewport annotation options set on and apply and similarly for this set all on and apply okay and go for the full screen for full screen let me call this toolbar here now go for the full screen okay now you can see a clear difference between those and if you want to simulate again you have to go for simulation simulation and simulation again go for full screen and fit vertically the reason for large deformation uh, i already explained in previous video let me compare those two results uh, material non-linearity and without material non-linearity so if you are not going to consider the material non-linearity what will happen it will consider a linear relationship between stress and strain and at this value okay assume that uh, here we have a stress value around 400 megapascal and at the 400 megapascal we are getting a strain value here okay the strain value is quite uh, less and that strain is uh, not plastic strain because we are defining as linear material model but here in this case if you are defining the non-linear material model for the red line okay this is the 
graph for the stress strain path of the material and uh, for the same stress value we are getting increased strain value and for such increased the strain value they are there we are getting plastic deformation in plate component and once plastic deformation is started uh, your plate component or any component can very easily take large deformations so this is the only reason so hope you get a clear idea of the convergence in abacus standard for static analysis one last important thing that i forget to tell you uh, if you are using such uh, energy dissipation method or we can say if we are define some artificial damping factor for the problem to get convergence make sure the damping energy should not be excess more than 5 or 10 percent otherwise what will happen your false result will be appear if your dissipation energy more than 10 percent so here i am going to keep my these results and deform and deform shape okay to make sure your energy is not exceed more than 5 percent you have to make a plot make a plot of the strain energy with respect to the time and compare that dissipation energy or damping energy with respect to time so to do so you have to go for here xy data manager just go for create from the odb output history okay continue and here you have at the last yeah static dissipation energy and strain energy and just click on the plot button uh, now let me dismiss those things see here uh, it is not visible which is uh, your strain energy and which is your damping energy just double click on that and go for here at font increase the size around 48 apply and ok and see here the red thing is nothing but your artificial damping energy that you allow and this is the blue thing is nothing but your strain energy so very easily you can see uh, our results are quite good because uh, the artificial damping energy is quite small as compared to the strain energy even we can say approximate to zero okay but for the convergence of the solution that energy is very very important the damping factor is very very important so again i am repeating if you are using the damping ratio to converge the solution or you can say the dissipation energy to converge the solution you must have to plot the dissipation energy with respect to the strain energy of the system and compare both okay if your dissipation energy is uh, more than 10 percent uh, that will be give you a false result okay so you have to reduce your dissipation ratio and again you have to reanalyze the condition so that's all for this video tutorial and thank you for listening if you did not gone through my previous videos uh, it is highly recommended you have to go through all linear and non-linear analysis sequential videos then only you are able to understand this video very betterly on the screen you can see the previous videos link thank you again